Dr.Ram with the shot. A male elephant that two diapers and ran with pearl, not pearl. Pronoun she, her. I'm a lefty with medium length, curly hair, pale skin, and an 811 rise shirt. Surprisingly, I don't have any New York shirt, but I have the Brooklyn Dodgers jacket. I have lots of connection to New York. My dad was born and raised in Brooklyn, lived in home, and a fan of the Dodgers. Let's test the shot box. Tell me about a connection you have with New York. Meanwhile, I'll continue. My dad left New York when he joined the Air Force and found his way to Texas, where he met my mom. So I'm a native Texan born and bred in Fort Worth, who lived in Plano, right next to dad. I was born hearing free, AKA profoundly deaf. Yet, that is my dad and me when I was about four or so. My vintage hearing aid has a heart on it, and I'm dressed in red. Clearly, it's Valentine's Day. My mom made me hearing aid characters to match my outfit. And Kathy was born and bred in upstate New York. Awesome, Kathy. Dylan is a Dodgers fan, but he prefers LA, not New York. Well, we'll all just have to agree to disagree. And Thomas lived in New York for seven years. His dad was born in Queens. Kate is native to New York, a native New Yorker. Here's the fact that's going to surprise you who have never met me. Many people make their assumption, even accessibility pros, and when you are vice president, you shall remain nameless. They assume I know sign language. I don't. That's neither a good or bad thing. It's just is. Deaf and hard of hearing people are different. I can only speak from my own experience. So listen, I rely on the breathing in my bionic ear, which is a lot cooler than saying cochlear implant. In my day job, when I'm not being in accessibility and caption pressure, I am a digital marketing handler and project management wrangler. And also say, he just lives 600 kilometers north from New York City, but he left New York City. Did you know that once upon a time, you needed a secret decoder to watch caption? Okay, maybe it was not so secret because it was definitely not portable. The caption, the caption decoder was the clunky thing that stopped by the TV. In North Dial, the only button that mattered was turning it off and on. The rest didn't do anything 90% of the time. Boy, have you come a long way since 1983. Now we don't need any special equipment to view captions. We can rock captions wherever we go, whether it's a hotel or a friend house or on a device. How cool is that? Here's the agenda for all time together. You know captions don't just magically appear. And y'all probably agree with me that automatic captions don't count. So we're digging the house, caption, captions rock. And Mirabai, our captioner, says her dad was born in New York. She's lived there for 17 years. And her son is the fifth generation New Yorker on her right side. Native, and Charles says he's a native Long Islander regular commuter to New York City and hopefully soon to be Brooklyn. Tell me the first generation also. All right, you have options for captioning your videos or caption those. And finally, many people complain captions suck. Following these tips will ensure you don't. Captions don't magically show up by themselves after you create a video. They typically require two things, the video, of course, and the text file with the caption. Even if you use YouTube automatic caption, it usually creates a caption text file. You can download it and use it. The format that you and I will use most likely are SRT and WebVTT, but those kinds of formats. The captions are in a text file that you can open in a text editor. My career, my career as a magician is a non-starter because I give away secrets. 
the magic happened in the time column that tells the caption when to appear and disappear. When you play the video that uses the caption file, it's called closed caption. Then this is a text file that engine can read up. That's how you get the benefit of SEO with closed caption. You have many options for adding caption to a video. I am sharing a short example showing you the general process of captioning a video. Don't use it YouTube because it's free and most people have an account. This will show you how to add captions to a video on YouTube. Open subtitle to select the video you want to caption. If you have a script, you can use auto sync. This is where you copy and paste your script. Let's grab the script to paste it here. Select assign timing. You can see the caption are there from the script. I'm going to break up the long line to keep each one no longer than 32 characters per line. Let's test the timing of the caption in the audio. Hey y'all, yeah. yeah. Meryl yeah. Evans here yeah. creating, creating a short clip. I was shorten the very last line so the caption in when I finish speaking. Otherwise, it looks perfect. If the timings are off, you can adjust the timing by moving the sliders back and forth until it's right. After you've confirmed the caption are in sync, publish. Then you can download the file to use wherever you publish the video. To print the length of the caption line model. More on that later. Second, at the end when I selected to download the video, I could download SRT, VTT, or SBV. SBV is short for step view. It's YouTube caption format that's similar to SRT. Next is what in the SRT file I downloaded from YouTube at the end of this video. SRT is short for Subgroup Subtitle File. LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, and many other platforms accept it. You'll see it has sequence numbers followed by a time code and then the caption. The captions show up when the video hits the first time code and then it goes away when the video which is the second time code. Let's check out another format. It is a VTT file. It's modeled after the SRT, but it takes caption a step further by allowing you to format the text, control the positioning, and other things. This is the same text in the previous example, except it doesn't have sequence number. So it's the time code showing the start and end time for each caption. For those who are brave enough, you can style VTT captions with the SS, but it's best to leave it to the default caption style. The only thing you may want to control is the placement of the caption to avoid overlapping the on-screen text. The code to add a video and caption file to a web that is simple enough, or so I thought. This is the code you enter in a web page. The first time I posted it, the captions worked only on Firefox. After a lot of fiddling, it worked on Chrome. To ensure it worked in Edge, I needed to add the meta attribute in the head. You may also may need to check your website always uses HTTPS, security encryption. Otherwise, the captions won't work in some browsers. You can have multiple tracks for providing captions in other languages. 
You can see that the dapple a mirror dot now slash web C T T with that copy into the chat box. Unfortunately, that with browser captions don't look uh, the same on our devices. I watched a movie on Amazon Prime on TV. Whenever a song came on, the caption showed hashtag instead of musical notes. Here's the threat. I wanted to capture the annoying. I played the movie on my desktop. This time, it had musical notes. Captions are not consistent across platforms. Test them. Here we are at the cooler world of captions. And like cola drink, there is a clear winner here. What's the difference between open and closed caption? You can turn the caption on and off. Depending on the platform, they can usually change how the captions look. You can even change them here in June. The caption text file which is covered, those engines can read that file, which is why closed captions help it eat out. The text file makes it possible to do translation. Closed captions require uploading two files, which have two problems. First, it's complicated for some people. Second, some website or platform don't allow you to upload a caption file. There are other downsides to closed captions. They have disappeared on LinkedIn, or they don't appear when they should for a myriad of reasons. One example is when you click a YouTube link from a DM on your phone LinkedIn app, it won't show up. As for open captions, they always show up because they're like an image glued on the video. Those engines can't read them and you can't turn them off and on. Some people don't like that because that affects their viewing experience. You cannot change the formatting. If the front or the background color is bad, viewers are stuck. Many creators don't know captioning best practices and don't always make good captioning choices. The winner is closed captions because it gives viewers more control and creators don't have to worry about the front or color choices. Think of closed captions like responsive website. Captions adjust to the screen size. They move and grow and shrink based on how you interact with the player control or restart the screen. Some platforms allow you to move the captions like on YouTube and here on Zoom. You can customize the captions here too. The set image shows I moved the caption to the top of the screen. Maybe not. Oh, that was the previous image. I'm sorry about that. Closed caption change size when you move and move based on the screen or device. If you flip your phone sideways, the captions will adapt and get larger. If you expand the screen, captions get larger. When you work with player control, the captions will shift up like these two images show before and after opening the player control. The left shows standard caption. The right shows the player control with the captions moved up. Open captions, they put. They don't change with the screen sign or move when the player controls pop up. So the player control overlap the caption, which affects readability. So what are your options for getting a video caption? First of all, I didn't say that about one. Play model caption. You have three options for captioning. You can do it yourself with tools, use the company that offers captioning services, or find a tool that automatically captions the video and edit those captions, which I'll show you next. The list of captioning tool is long. What's the best one? You're gonna hate my answer. It depends. It depends on your processes and preferences. Would you publish an article on your website if it has typos and other errors? Well then, would you publish caption on your website if it has typos and other errors? That's what automatic captions are and why I call them auto-caption. Conversation happens fast 
It only takes one wrong word, one wrong letter, and a caption to confuse the viewer. Before the viewer can decipher the wrong caption, the caption will move on to the next lines. There are six reasons why auto questions are a big problem. They don't make them. A line of a song has one wrong word and a missing letter. It was enough to change the meaning of the line. Before I could figure it out, the lyrics moved on. Captions are embarrassing, as you'll see later. Other captions give wrong information. On a video, the caption, the other caption that to boil on high for 45 minutes and preheat the oven. What the audio really said was, boil on high for four to five minutes and don't preheat the oven. That'll be one burned item. That hurt your brand. If that's the ability to put it up passionate and we're fully top brand. If I see bad caption, I could find something else to watch. If the company didn't think it was worth fixing the caption, I don't think it was worth washing them. I'm sorry, Harvard and MIT got sued for the lack of caption. But they argued. Our videos have captions, pointing to the automatic caption. Both that of the lawsuit and to and agreed to accurately caption the video. Attorney Haben Germer says auto captioning is not equivalent to accurate professional caption. Well, at the rest of the presentation, I'm going to share things to show you the problem with auto caption. Most of these are set in New York. I got excited when Hamilton came out on Disney. They did a great job with the caption, except for one thing the lyrics were all in italics. That's redundant when you have musical notes. Besides, italics are easy to read, especially for those with reading disability. Here, auto caption bungled the whole line. They said his mother went quacking with the cousin. The correct words are, Alex got better, but his mother went quack, moved in with the cousin. Hey, if family friend, friendly Disney captioned that word, then other captions should too. Simply, if it's said, if it's heard, it should be captioned. Here, Jerry Seinfeld appeared on Larry King talking about his iconic show. This line makes no sense. The last part was supposed to be 75 million viewers on the last episode. Automatic captions are a good start. The next step is to edit it. Here's a quick clock of using an app to automatically caption the video and then cleaning it up. We're going to automatically caption a video and then edit it. First, upload the file. Then stand by to let the app do its magic. It'll take a few minutes depending on the length of the video. After it's done, open it to edit it. Hey y'all, Mira Evan here. This is not here. a good Cl caption style. Let's change that. Much better. The other captions need work. Through the magic of editing, it's done in seconds. Hey y'all, Mira Evans here create. At this point, I start playing with the timing and I'll fix the length as the caption are too long. When you're happy, download the file. Now that you know how to caption a video, is your work done? Of course not. Captioning audio is only part of the formula for awesome caption. Quality is the other half. The reason why great captions are boring is because they let the video be the song. They'll fight for the spotlight or detract you from the video. If I know the caption, it's a sign of not good quality. My friend John Van Brucker explained it well. Captions are like virgin. Ideally, you're only thinking about them if they're built wrong. 
The best captioning guideline comes from the Grab and Caption Media Program captioning key, so clear and easy to understand. SDC has closed captioning rules, and WCAG also has captioning, captioning in a criterion. The captioning can is based on my experience as someone who depends on captions. I want us to provide a simple way to capture caption best practices with these 10 rules. If, caption, if a caption video follows these, then the caption will most likely be optimized. Thank you, Thomas. He shared the link to captioning key in the chat box. Some organizations have their own captioning guidelines. You can do an online search to find an example. BBC is one of them. If you're like me, you love a film example. So here's the number one rule of awesome caption, and this shows you why. One side contains great caption, and the other painful caption. One thing to note is the right side has many different captions. Consistency is important. I just wanted to show you actual examples of captions I think. Here we go. The most important rule of great caption is read a body. When people can't read the caption, none of the other rules matter. So make sure your caption, the text, stands out in the background, the scene, and any detraction. When you post your video, be sure to add hashtag captioned so we can find it. Read a body has four components, size, color, front, and background which is the color behind the text. Captions without a background are hard to read. When I was looking for exercise videos, I found caption videos from two companies. Peloton won me over because they were more readable. I promise I will mention Manhattan. Here, I, here it is. This is the uncle who is the professor at Manhattan College. He's talking about the veteran at ease program. It's a very cool program. Anyway, this has a serious readability issue. I often see captions get lost in the video for the same reason. And I'm sharing a link to the program that my uncle founded in case anybody was interested. Here's Kelly Fisher on 30 Rock. The captions are in all uppercase. Miss Key's captions are far more readable. You may have seen some videos you karaoke style captions. This is when the captions highlight each word in the second color as it's spoken or sung. I've noticed a trend that some people highlight keywords in a different color, but even when the highlighted word doesn't move, it's still a problem. Check it out. Hey y'all, Mel Evans here with the caption value and 30 tip about colors. The best captions use one color. I know people who use the second color to emphasize words or phrases mean well. That's worse than great and written content, just not in caption. You get so focused on the differently colored words that you lose the message. Also, Skip the caption feature that highlights the word as it's spoken. Everyone reads at a different speed. Let them be in control. The best captions are boring because they create an effortless user experience. Thanks for watching and captioning. Even without movement, my eyes can't help but focus on the word in a different color. Try it that night. I can't read the whole caption without being drawn to the colored word. As the result, the video method is lost. Skip captions that are karaoke style or change color caption. Stick with basic black and white captions. Simple works. This one that explains why I say auto caption. Hey y'all, Mira Evan Digital Marketing Pro here to create a video so I can show you how to caption it. It would be interesting to see how bad the automatic captions are for this video. I call them 
I don't question because the weather was mistakes. And they never, ever get my first and last name right. Other corruption don't like my accent very much. It's not a British or a French accent. Rather, I have a deaf accent because I was born hearing free. This video should be long enough now to do the trick. Thanks for coming and captioning your video. Other corruption are good for a few, a few laughs, but they're not so funny when you're trying to watch the video. I often quit watching videos when the captions aren't accurate. It turns out many of those do too. This is why auto captions are not always better than no captions. Gremlin 2 has to stay in, in which one of the Gremlin things, New York, New York. The line is completely botched. It blends two lines into one incomplete line. You may or may not have seen Taxi Driver, but you most likely know that Al Pacino's famous line, you talking to me? I don't crouch and change that to, I'm talking to me. Well, it's true, he's talking to himself, that's not what he says. When you watch this next video, cover up the left side and see what happens. Weight caption is synchronized. This means the caption follows the action on the screen. What is heard, what is said. Yes, we can tell when the captions are out of sync even with the sound off, and it's dizzying. Make sure your caption follows the action on the screen. Now check out a synchronized fail. Here's the thing from Younger. The captions are out of sync here. Ah, thank God, four hours until she's on a plane and out of my hair. Where are they going? Grand tour of Italy. Yep, Ooh. now that she's married, she can eat all the pasta she wants. Uh, Wanna dance? I do. Yep. Well, I, uh, I think I got my answer. The answer is I love you. Dizzying, right? This happened more than one in the kids' baking championship. You know, reality shows love to draw things out to increase the spend. Pay attention to the caption and the audio to see what went wrong. Power at the Five Spice. Unfortunately, the baker leaving us today is. Namaya. Did you figure it out? Captions, you will find out who's leaving a whole eight seconds before the audio. Now, this is an example of suspense that right. They drag it out so on the I cut part of it. Also, notice how the caption describes music to him. Ladies, man, it's the final rose tonight. We're ready. Thank you. Jill for cashing the mistake I made. The are you talking to me line was Robert De Niro, not Al Pacino. I don't know how I did that. Anyway. <clears throat> yes, that is matter. And here's why. Hey y'all, Mira Evans here with the caption tip. Yes, size matter. Really, really mottled and great caption. You want to avoid having caption go one or two words at a time so far that even the fastest reader can't keep up or absorb the information. You also want to avoid the caption going all the way across. Multiple lines. I've seen them go three, four, five lines long. You're still focused on reading that you make the action on the screen. Goldilocks found the best answer 
and that's the middle. And then we capture the one or two lines and aim for the middle of the screen. So, yes, size matters in good caption. Remember the YouTube video where I show in the line, then and bad breaking through are the two most common problems at the end caption. Even I messed that up in my early days of captioning. Then it's the difference between scanning and reading. Short lines make it effortless to scan, caption, and watch the video. Long lines force you to read. It's not instant. You're reading more, so you miss more of the video. Videos often break these rules. More than two lines makes it hard not to lose your place. In the one to two line, about 32 per line, characters per line. The line breaking point, captioning key has great example. The biggest one is not to end and start a sentence in one line of caption, like in this photo. I copied the link again in case you missed the captioning key link. As for alignment, the important thing is to keep it consistent for the entire video. The next clip will show you the difference. The captions for How I Met Your Mother on Hulu are terrible. They often show three or four lines at a time, which covers more of the video. Here, the captions have terrible line breaking points and bad alignment. Which position do you prefer? Top or bottom? In this one, you might want to hide one side for about a second and then look to the other side for the remainder. Do you prefer top or bottom position? In captions, of course. The majority of people prefer them on the bottom. There was no scientific research or data to prove that. For some reason, when you look at the bottom, you can see more of the video. Somehow, when captions are up top, it seems like we cast less of the video. It's almost like our eyes tend to gravitate up rather than down. So which do y'all prefer, top or bottom? Let me know in the chat box. Thank you, Jill. Not the bottoms here. Ooh, Thomas was really. <laughs> yeah, I can't get used to the top either. So I have conducted multiple polls and 99% picked the bottom. Do not adjust your volume. It won't suddenly stop working. The video has no sound to show the importance of sound. The left is the correct way. Right shows what happens when you don't caption sound, which is what happens all the time in international movies with subtitles. This was a simple video to show the importance of sound. Noting silent or background music is important. One episode of a TV show went on and on without caption. I 
I didn't have my bionic ear on, so I wonder if I was missing a voiceover or a song. So these viewers wondering if the caption are mucked up. The caption tells a story by letting us know the machine beats fast and the blood pressure drops. Obviously something is tense. And this thing from Lily and Dash on Netflix, Dash is trying to talk to the customer rep. It's clear the rep is ignoring Dash. As viewers know, there's no one on the other end of the phone. At the start of the TV show, when introducing the stone, the caption and the credit with the Chiron really overlap. In fact, many, cap many shows move the caption up temporarily and then bring them back down. Now Evan here talking about credit and caption. They should never, ever fight the viewers' attention. They want to see both. I'm getting there. I'll talk about what I do. I'm a digital marketing pro who works with marketing leaders on their project and tasks. I may develop their social media marketing plan, manage it, or do social media ads. And finally, content marketing. Contact me when you need a marketing right-hand gal. Actually, I'm left-handed. Left-hand gal. The captions move up top temporarily to a blend overlapping with the title on the screen. I had to watch Lauren order SBU on Hulu instead of NBC because the captions messed up. Hulu is notorious for having the captions overlap the credit. Here's another quick example where the on screen text has important information but the caption cover it up. Viewers want to see both without streaming. Now let's take a look at what voice means and why it matters. I'm going to turn the sound off for this one. The caption will tell you the story. Here, the caption let us know the character talks softly. You can say, whoa, so many different ways, and it means different things. Lily and Dash had a voiceover. If it wasn't for the caption, we might have thought it was the same person speaking. This makes a big difference. You never want to confuse your viewers and have them wondering, who said that? Here's the clip with a few examples of speakers. There are times when it's not clear who is speaking on a video. Sometimes the speaker isn't on screen, or two people speak and the caption show dialogue from both in one shot. Here are two different ways the caption show this. The first clip uses the person's name. Take a look. Oh, you weren't out there that long. You didn't get the food? I almost was food. Okay, I, I wish I never even came on this stupid trip. Well, who forced you? Gloria! 
Just next to Dapper put caption underneath the speaker. There are seven seaside. Everyone, I'd like you to meet Don Lemon and RuPaul, the pair of black queens. Hey, Mitchell, that's the third time you've wandered over there. What are you doing? Nothing. He's got something in his mouth. No, yeah. Let him view us now who speaks the land is important. The video shows all three of these examples for identifying the speaker to let us know who that's from. You can put the caption under the speaker when you use open caption or VTT, which allows you to control position. Here are the captions. Let us know Odu Ted is doing the voiceover. In this case, they can get away with all caps, but it's better to use mid case. Even though Titus is on the screen, we know from the caption it's Kimmy talking and taking the photo as the sound tells all. Here's the last one of the caption 10. The session is a live event. Most live events use scrolling captions that isn't always that can always be avoided. However, I've seen scrolling caption in recorded videos that run live. Pop in is easier. Okay, and these two videos are not insane. It was a challenge to make this. So the left is the pop in and the right is the scroll. Hey y'all, Mira Evans here, talking about the difference between scrolling caption and pop in caption. Many people prefer pop in caption because it lets people read at their own Pace. The movement from the scrolling caption is distracting and takes away from the action on the screen. Thanks for watching and captioning. We've covered the 10 best practices for awesome caption. Here's the recap. Readability, accuracy, think, length, position, sound, credit, voice, speaker, and flow. Now let's put together everything we've learned. And the accessibility company captioned this video of our friend Thomas Logan. This is the kind of caption I see every day. The actor is captioned optimized or customized. See if you can spot the difference and share your thoughts in the chat box. Hi, everyone. I'm Thomas Logan from Equal Entry and I'll be presenting about the nine new proposed success criteria for WCAG 2.2. A random fact about me, I love the sound of a xylophone. Also, I'm excited about Jamie Knight and Lion from the BBC's presentation on cognitive accessibility for VR. I'm sure the team's done amazing research, and I can't wait to learn from them. See you there in March. Yeah, Joe is right. Shorter line rounds. Yay. Anybody else? Don't the little things make a huge difference? The original uh, timing, shorter. Data phone sound by itself. Parsing benefit helped. The original had long lines, less than idea breaking point and ended and started sentences in the same line. The captimized version took all of these to put sound on its own line. You've probably seen some embarrassing screenshots of bad captions. The Daily Mail shared this from a New Zealand talk show that showed up all over Twitter. I can't begin to read the caption out loud because it's embarrassing. Hillary Berry, the TV host, speaking the line, retweeted the picture and wrote, Salmon, I love salmon. Do you want your company or brand to be featured on Twitter like this? So yes, quality caption matter. Besides captioning video, here are some action items you can take after that. What can we do to get more captioned videos out there? If you see a video that should be captioned, ask. Many companies will abound. If you see a captioned video, leave a comment thanking the creators for captioning. 
and encourage them to use hashtag caption to help expand their video reach or thank them if they use the hashtag. Next time you post your video online, use hashtag caption. It's a unique hashtag because it doesn't tell you the topic of the video, but rather it has caption. One of the biggest barriers to captioning is not knowing what to do. Share captioning how to resources and gone. Feel free to connect with me at mail at equalentry.com, which I've added to the chat box. Uh, connect with me on Twitter uh, at Mel K. Evans on LinkedIn. I think I'm connected to a lot of you already, but here it is, which is LinkedIn.com slash in slash Mel. And finally, the caption guide that has everything, or most everything, that's at Mel.net slash caption. Thank you for your time. And I want to send a Texas bag. Thank you and yeah to I New York D NYC from ha for having me. I can take your question. We have a few minutes left, but maybe um everybody's gonna be willing to hang out a little bit longer. So go ahead and add your question to the chat box. Great. Thank you so much, Meryl. That was awesome presentation and you had me and lots of people laughing with some of your illustrative examples, which I think are, are very memorable and, and helpful uh, for understanding. I wanted to, right before, like, please, um, <clears throat> as Meryl said, type your questions, or if you would like, <clears throat> you can also, <clears throat> excuse me, come onto video and ask your question. Um, as Meryl mentioned, we, we would love for you to ask your question too as a, um, with your video. So if it, it's up to you, either type your question or, or um, raise your hand um, and we'll, we will call on you to ask your question. I did want to um, acknowledge and point out just from my observation of watching all of Merrill's presentation, Merrill and I have worked together very, very recently on automatic uh, auto corruption project where just in one minute of video, we showed how poor automatic uh, translations work. Uh, for someone that has a voice or a, a different uh, pronunciation style. And so I want to also acknowledge Mirror by Night again. I was watching the captions for this entire presentation. Uh, they were amazing. So I'm also going to paste into the chat one of the other presentations we've had in the past at Alley New York is why human captioning but I think um, the tonight's presentation or today's presentation for you, it really illustrates that. And we've seen that very recently in a project we worked on together that uh, the auto, auto craptions, um, you know, they really are even more automatically crap when you're not having maybe the standard voice that the model was trained on. So I think tonight, so much, thanks. Okay, and so we'll, we'll start taking questions. Um, I think the yeah. first one we had, do you, do you yeah. have the one from Stacy on YouTube? Oh, no, sorry. I have one. I have one from YouTube first that I'll um, ask you and then we'll, you can get into the chat ones. But from uh, Thuy Doan, I remember the first time I tried to caption a YouTube video, I got so fed up with the timing of everything. Do you think that's just something that comes with time? So that's a question we got from YouTube. So... Um, actually, it looks really well because I just tested it recently. I copied a few, but it was actually an equal entry webinar. I took the plain text file with, with the script and pasted it into YouTube and that is thanks to timing and it got it almost perfect. So the only reason I, I can think of that it not, may not be working, it could be poor quality audio or maybe somebody's talking too fast and they're not pausing enough to get the uh, video a chance to figure out the timing. So give it a try. With a, make a short clip with a short clip and test it out and see how that goes. Okay, and then you have a question from Christina Babcock. Should a sound be captioned if it can be seen? For instance, if we see the door being closed, should it be captioned 
bracket, door closes, close bracket. Now, it should only be captioned if it's home. So, and of course, that might be an, an if it's seen but not heard, that might be an item for audio description, which is a different ball game and just as important. Okay, um, so another question I had for you, Meryl, from um, the part where you showed the placement of the captions and you showed moving the captions to the top, or the bottom, or moving those around, what file format is that? And I mean, is that something that you can do in YouTube or is that something you do in a different tool to move the captions if, if that is something you need to do? The, the VTT file, the text file, the you can't do it on YouTube. You will have to do it. It, it it's here in internet. So what you can do is create the VTT in YouTube and then edit it in a text editor to control the positioning. So if you go to mirror.mail, you can see an example. I hope I got that right. You can go see it in example in action. My show, I moved the placement. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so we have a recommendation for subtitle edit um, from Jolie. It's a great free tool for editing captions. And then from Dylan Fox, do you think we will need a new file format for captions in virtual or augmented reality? That's a great question. I'm not surprised that you asked it, Dylan. It, I've been thinking about that ever since we had our XR access last month. And I'm being very open-minded about it. I'm trying not to be too stuck on my caption rules because I know VR is a, and AR are a totally different environment. So I don't know what the researchers are coming up with yet. Um, SLT and VTT are great because they're text-based, but we have a lot of things to figure out with it. I'm, I'm figuring it out too. All right, so anyone else have a question? Um, also, if you raise your hand or you want just to come on video, we will um, be happy to have you ask your question on video. Um, question from Sergeant Peppers, will the links be shared and resource be shared after the presentation via email? It'd be handy to have the full list. Whoop, hold on, it's slipped up. Yeah, the resources will be shared. Um, we'll either put it in the comments of I, New York City, and we'll, we'll um, do a recap on Equal Entry blog. There'll be a recap, and I'll capture all the links. You can also get my PowerPoint already, right now. But if you, in case you missed it at the beginning, it is here. So it's mail.nas.a11ynyc. Okay, so a question from Lauren. In the creation of a language learning website, for example, a video with French dialogue for an English speaking learner, would you suggest that the noise descriptions are in the language the learner speaks or the language they are learning? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so if the Russian caption the caption will be reflective whatever the audio says. And usually, it's been so long since I've seen a video teaching a language, but generally it should... Okay, I'm trying to keep this simple. I know what I want to say, but to put it in words. So, if the video is English and it's teaching friends, but it's an English-based video, these sounds will most likely be in English because that's how the video is created. And anything spoken will be 
and whatever language they're speaking. It's, it's kind of a tricky one, but generally, let me think. I'm trying to think of a good example to help me here. So, okay, I'm, I'm, I turn on my TV. I'm in Texas. I turn on my TV and I want, I'm watching a show to learn Spanish. The sound should be in English because it is, I am in America, I'm in Texas where English is the language. So it should show up in English and then whatever the teacher will show up in Spanish. I hope that makes sense. Clear as mad. Meryl, thank, thank you. Uh, so we have another question from YouTube <clears throat> from Ken ST18. Is there a minimum font size or an ideal font size for captions? Well, if it's closed caption, you don't have to worry about that. That's the best thing about closed caption. You don't have to worry about font, color, or style because it, it's done for you and it changes as you change the video. But if you're doing open caption because of places like Twitter, or Instagram or whatever, then it's hard to give you a sign because it depends on what button you're using. And, you know, I try to use, I'm trying to remember the name of the font I use typically, but it looks very similar to the default caption. And usually I'll use 24 points, if I remember right. Uh, so, the best way to measure is to look at the caption right now and try to match it as best as you can for open caption. But just remember, when you're showing it on social media, whatever, people may have it, they may not uh, make the screen larger. So it's going to be very small. So I would suggest creating a clip, a short one, and testing them out before you start making more and more videos than longer videos and see how it looks. Um, I'll have one other comment slash question. I observed for my father's television, so hardware television, the captions were frequently placed up at the top of the screen. And it seemed like a choice from that specific television. Like if you were watching the same show on a different device, they wouldn't be placed there. But I was wondering if you knew anything about that. I, that's a hypothesis, but I was surprised um, for his TV that the caption seemed to be more frequently at the top um, and there wasn't a setting or any control for that. So I was wondering if you knew anything about hardware devices making that choice. So when you, did you play the same video on a different device and the caption were at the bottom? Yeah. That's interesting. I haven't heard about mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. it being a specific model or brand name. I haven't seen that. Mm -hmm. I, um, when I watch it on all my different TVs, it's always at the bottom, but mm -hmm. occasionally, like the last day on the basketball documentary, when I tried to watch it when it was on air, all the caption kept showing up, up on top, but it was not my TV because somebody else reported the same problem. Thankfully, by the time it came out on Netflix, it was back at the bottom where it belonged. And I could watch it there. I could not watch it when it was all up top. I just felt like I was missing the action on the screen. All right. Well, I think those are all of the questions we have today. We want to say thank you so much, Meryl, for the fantastic presentation today and lots of comments for everyone thankful there in the chat. We really um, appreciate that. Oh, we have one more question here. Sergeant Peppers, uh, is it okay to include titles slash credits in the caption? Oh, what I think you're asking, Sergeant Peppers, is like, when you see the show title, like the Kimmy Schmidt example, you're asking if, if the caption should show the same thing. No, if, the, if, those, if it's already on the screen, you don't need to caption it. 
the only time you read it, if it unreadable. Like there was karaoke, um, Greece, Greece, the musical karaoke, but the karaoke was horrible. It was kind of far, it kept changing, it kept moving. And I say, honestly, the people that can't stand that would probably not watch it because it's distracting, it was too much motion. But thankfully, the captions were also doing the lyrics because it was just hard to follow. So, but typically, Jeopardy, watch Jeopardy sometimes, and you'll see there's never caption when they're showing the answer on the screen close up. But a couple of times I have noticed when they were asking, when they were showing a picture, but there was no words, they forgot the caption. So Jeopardy is a great example to watch, to learn from that.